Hey folks, it's Finn. Today I wanted to do a information, support and advice video as part of the Vlogmas series that is Christmas themed. And for those of you who know, I'm in recovery. I'm an alcoholic, an addict. I'm seven years clean and sober. And I thought it might be helpful to talk about coping at Christmas when you're in recovery because it is not an easy time to cope with. Even now, at seven years clean and sober, I still find it quite tough. It's not really tough anymore at this stage because I want a drink. It's more tough at this stage because you've got to be so vigilant because everything has alcohol in it. And people seem to just negate the fact that it's alcohol at Christmas. You know, it's just like, oh, it's just a bit of whiskey because it's Christmas, it's fine. So you've got to be so careful when you're eating food and drinking anything. People just want to give you free drinks and that can be really hard. So I have to be really, really on my toes all over Christmas when I'm eating out with people, when I'm accepting chocolates and cake and all those sorts of things. So I thought it might be helpful just to share how I cope with it for anybody else out there who's also in recovery or who's having issues around alcohol. This might be helpful. Christmas is a time when there are loads of parties going on and you're invited to all of them and when you're a person in recovery they can be more of a pain in the neck than fun to be honest they can be quite hard if you've got understanding friends in your life it's not too bad the biggest issue I think people have is like well what do I do when I go to a party then what do I take if I can't you know if I can't take wine I don't want to just rock up empty-handed well there are lots of other things you can take that will also help you. For example, taking things like after dinner mints, taking mince pies that you know are alcohol free, taking a Christmas pudding that you know is alcohol free. They are great things to turn up with that you've contributed to rather than a bottle of wine. And they also double up as if the puddings are a little bit dodgy and you're not quite sure, then you know you've brought something that you can definitely eat. When I go to parties in people's houses, I do also find it quite helpful to take my own drink because I'm not a great fan of the soft drinks like Coke and lemonade and all of that. I drink them sometimes, but I don't like them a lot. I'm quite sugar sensitive. And the last thing I want to do is just be loaded up on sugar. So I'll quite often take myself a bottle of fizzy water because it's something I really enjoy. You can get some really nice cordials as well. I use a cordial called Bottle Green and they do loads of different varieties. I love their elderflower version. They do both a cordial and a pre-mixed one and they're really nice to take to people's houses as well. They even do a winter spiced one and actually if you mix that with hot water you've made your very own mulled wine and it's really quite nice. Don't be afraid to ask the person that you're eating with if there's any alcohol in the food and make sure you state that it, it's even if it's been burnt off because not all alcohol is burnt off and I'm in recovery and my thinking is even if it's been burnt off you don't know if there's a slight residue in there so I go on the principle of an allergy you wouldn't have a teeny bit of a peanut if you had a peanut allergy because it would likely still set off your reaction to it and equally I wouldn't have for example an onion ring even if it had been beer battered and the person says that you know that should be cooked off there might be a slight trace and that might set off my craving for alcohol so I don't risk it at all it can feel quite difficult to ask people and this is where it can be useful to have excuses then I mean if the people you don't know very well it can be helpful to say something like I'm on an antibiotic that is really really sensitive to alcohol and if I have any, even if it is kind of cooked in, it can set off a real awful sickness virus. And if people know that, they're being very sensitive. Of course, if you wanted to say, look, I'm in recovery, then that's fine too. But a lot of people don't want to be that open and that's fine. I know it's embarrassing, but at the end of the day, it's better to be a little bit embarrassed asking about alcohol in food than getting drunk and making an idiot of yourself and embarrassing yourself even more. I had this in early days at my first Christmas. I'd gone to a party and I'd asked everybody but there was alcohol in it because people had brought stuff and people were saying, no, 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 it's all fine. And I'm tucking into a chocolate dessert and I was like, I'm not sure about this. And I just said, can I just double check? Is there any alcohol in there? It's like, oh yeah, it's just a bit of Baileys at the bottom. Like Baileys suddenly didn't count, you know. So you do have to be so very careful. I always want to be able to socialise with my friends, but I do find pubs quite difficult. If it's just a general sit-down, comfortable meal, that's nice, but like on a Friday and Saturday night, 
when people are really in the festive spirit and they're really drunk and really loud, I can find that too much. But I do also want to be able to socialise with my friends. So what I will often do is I will go to the very early part of it where people are quite sedate and sober and not slurring and not repeating. And then once they start slurring and repeating themselves, that's my cue to leave. And the thing is, once people have had a bit to drink, they don't even notice you've gone really and it's fine. And the fact that you turned up, it's fine. Make sure you've always got an escape plan. I always keep a spare tenner tucked away so that worst case scenario I can ring a taxi and I can get myself out of there. If you have a supportive friend that understands you're in recovery, take them with you for support. It's really, really vital, especially in early days in such a difficult environment to have somebody on your side. Unless you know the people who you're drinking with really well and you trust them, do not let anybody buy you a drink. A lot of people who don't know that you're in recovery might just be thinking they're being nice. I'll just make their drink a little bit festive, put a little shot of whiskey in it, and before you know it, you've had a Coke with a shot of whiskey on the side. So always go to the bar with people. Always watch what you're given unless you really know the person very well who's ordering for you. Also, know what you're going to drink before you go out. Make a decision about what you're going to drink. There is nothing worse than being stood at a bar with loads of alcohol behind it and very few soft, op soft options showing and then making a choice. So always decide before you go out. I know that I'm always going to have lime and soda. If they've got really nice cordials like elderflower presse and that, I will choose that. But I go out knowing I'm going to have lime and soda. I go to the bar, I know that's what I'm ordering. And it's actually nice to have a big pint glass of something because then people are less likely to notice you with a half drink and want to buy you more to top up. If you have supportive people or if you're in a recovery programme, make sure you put those friends' numbers on speed dial on your phone. If you have a sponsor, if you're in Alcoholics Anonymous like I am, put your sponsor on speed dial so that at any given moment, if it's all feeling too much, you can press that number. Get yourself outside, ring somebody, get out. As I say, the big thing is about being hyper vigilant around what you're eating and drinking. I find markets quite troublesome and I've been tripped up a couple of times in a market. I bought what I thought was a mocha, a hot chocolate with coffee in it, at a stall, and the chap said something to me as he was putting the lid on it, and I didn't hear what he said. Anyway, we walked off, and we, I was just about to take a drink, and my friend said, stop, don't drink that, can I just have a smell of your drink? And he'd put a shot of brandy in it. What the chap had said was, I've just made it a bit festive for you. How appalling is that? I mean, he didn't even know if I was allergic to it. It's awful, so you have to be so, so careful. Equally, with the people walking around with trays of food, it's best just to avoid it because it's likely to have something alcohol-related in it. If the worst-case scenario happens and you accidentally bite into a mince pie with brandy in it, or you do what I did in, in my early Christmas and have a mouthful of pudding with Baileys in it, don't panic. I know it's distraught. I, I was absolutely distraught when it happened to me. I rung my sponsor. I thought I'd messed up everything. It's an accident. You didn't choose to drink. It's different. If it happens to you, rinse your mouth out of water loads and loads and loads and loads of times and then drink lots of water just to flush it through. Make sure you call someone straight away. Don't beat yourself up, but just learn from it for next time. Early Christmases when you're not drinking are so, so very hard. So it's really, really important to get yourself into a recovery program with some support. I have got clean and sober with Alcoholics Anonymous and I will always recommend that route. I do recognise that there's different routes for different people, so it's finding out what works for you. But what I love about Alcoholics Anonymous is the support 24-7, all year round. There is always an AA meeting somewhere in your area and on Christmas Day, I can guarantee it, you will find an all-day Christmas meeting somewhere near you. Everywhere I've ever lived, there's been one near to me so that if I'm struggling on Christmas Day, I can go to one. Because it is really, really hard, especially in these early days, to sit at Christmas and watch everyone around you drinking when suddenly rules about drinking don't apply. You can wake up in the morning and have a shot of whiskey straight away and no one cares because it's Christmas. So it can be really hard for someone in recovery to cope with that. I always used to get up. My first drink on a Christmas morning was a Baileys. It was breakfast. It was fine. It was Christmas. Whereas now I get up and I'll make myself a really nice hot chocolate with squirty cream and marshmallows. So it's important to replace your drink with something that you enjoy so you can still get that feeling of treating yourself and doing something nice and indulging yourself without harming your recovery. 
remember that Christmas Day, where it's really full on, Christmas Day, Boxing Day, they're usually the two days where people are just drinking loads, and it is hard if you're around that. But just remind yourself of the reasons why you're not drinking. Remind yourself that you're going to wake up in the morning remembering all of Christmas Day, not having a terrible hangover, not having said anything you regret, and there won't be any damning pictures of you on Facebook, naked, on top of a phone box with a cone on your head. Always a bonus. It is a really tough time, but it's perfectly easy to get through with some forward thinking. As I said, things to think about before you go to a house party, before you go out with friends. Just think beforehand what you're going to drink, what you're going to say to people if they want to buy you a drink and you don't want one, how you're going to get out if it's all too much. Some forward thinking and you can just enjoy it and it'll be fine. There was a great book that I used in early recovery which helped me in situations where I didn't know how I would live sober, how I would manage to be sociable where everyone else is drinking and I wasn't and be okay with that, you know. It's called Living Sober and it's a book published by Alcoholics Anonymous. Even if you're not in AA, you can get it. I'll put a link at the bottom to the AA website and you can order any books on there and you can also look at any meetings that are available in your area should you wish to go down that route of support which I will of course always highly recommend because AA not only saved my life but has given me a completely new one I love my sober life I now love Christmas I just find all this stuff a bit irritating that I've got to try and avoid drink but it, it doesn't bother me now I love my clear head I love remembering everything life is so much better sober for me and there is not one part of me that wants to drink. I really hope that's helpful. Big love out there to everybody who's in recovery. It is a tough time, but we can get through it. Plug into your support networks, utilize some advice, and it'll be fine. Thanks for watching everybody. Take care of yourselves. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.